Okay, to, um, well, somewhat review, but uh, uh, the, the attacks that people might mount against our database systems and, and what, uh, you know, how, how they're going to go about it. Um, we'll talk about protections uh, in a bit maybe here, but... Um, if somebody is attacking us uh, now to take a specific example which applies to a number of these uh, specific attacks um, we uh, if we hold uh, employee salary information and and of course we you know do if if we are the human resource office or something like that um, we uh, should not give away an individual's salary. Uh, you know, the, the amount of money that they make. Um, now, there are a number of situations where we will want to uh, give away the, uh, you know, provide to various authorities the total salary that we pay everybody or the um, average salary that our, our employees make, uh, things like that. So um, we need to ensure uh, that, you know, the, the information that should be made available is made available, but the information that uh, shouldn't, you know, an individual salary is not going to be divulged. And there's, there's ways of uh, doing this. There's, there's inference attacks. And this is, uh, again, you know, the information that uh, people uh, should have should not give away the information they shouldn't have. So, for example, uh, somebody should uh, not be able to ask, you know, what is John Smith's salary? But equally, um, they should not be able to uh, submit queries saying, what is John's, uh, what is the total, you know, the average salary for everybody in the company, and separately, what is the average salary for everybody in the company uh, except John Smith, or what is the total uh, salary for everybody, and what is the total salary for everybody uh, without John Smith? And, you know, there, uh, you can infer from those pieces of information uh, what John Smith's salary is. You just, you know, subtract one from the other. Um, <clears throat> in a sense, that is also an example of an aggregation attack. Being able to obtain multiple pieces of information which give information about uh, uh, what, uh, what we are doing, um, which should not be divulged. Um, uh, I, I, lots of other examples of of aggregation. Um, I remember, uh, well, drug uh, uh, drug companies um, when uh, the uh, you get your pharmacy billing or or something like that from medical insurance, um, and. Uh, if it's going to a public office, it'll have a code for the uh, the drug rather than saying what the actual drug is. But if you are a pharmacy, of course, you have a code, uh, a, a list of the codes and what the drugs are. And so you can aggregate these, these pieces of information, and therefore you are able to identify uh, what this individual is suffering from. Again, something that should not be divulged. So, uh, aggregation. Um, 
multiple queries again uh john smith and and you know total total salary and total salary without john smith um being able to submit multiple queries um modifying them in certain ways again may give information that we do not want to divulge uh we've talked about sql we've talked about the fact that uh, you know we're using it uh often over public networks and that people are very often sending the SQL request in plain text rather than uh, doing some form of encryption or encoding uh, so that it is not evident uh, what the query is and how you can modify it to get some additional information. Um, there, there are bypass attacks. Um, we typically put a lot of the access controls and that sort of thing into the front end of the database. Um, and if somebody can get direct access to the database engine, then, of course, you know, they're, they're able to, to bypass a lot of these controls. So, you know, we, uh, depending on, on uh, what kind of threats we face, the sensitivity of the information that we are holding, um, we will want to uh, uh, determine uh, additional protections that we may want to have. I had one uh, particularly egregious example. Um, it was actually um, church database software, and, and uh, uh, the uh, my wife had to deal with the database in, in some ways, but was of course not allowed to see. Uh, financial information, what uh, people were giving and, and that sort of thing. But um, she was having a problem with the system. Uh, I offered to help out um, and uh, discovered that, um, again, the access controls were only built into the front end. And the actual database itself was um, uh, DBase2. And that's a fairly standard open file format. So, in, in fact, all you needed was, you know, a, a sector editor, and you could read the entire database, absolutely everything, all the information, all the private information. Uh, so, you know, just bypass the front end. Uh, in that case, fairly easy to do. Um, uh, we talked about uh, SQL and the, um, uh, the fact that we use it a lot for uh, web transactions. Um, the web interfaces overall um, are problematic in that um, the web itself, HTML, and, and the functions of the World Wide Web are not particularly suitable for um, secure transactions, identified transactions. They are, in fact, all individual uh, submissions of requests. And so um, if we are doing something over the web, we have to uh, prepare additional uh, security for our web application programming. And, and we'll uh, talk about that uh, a little bit later on here.